I've said it before, the Sega Genesis wasn't known for its amazing RPG library, but powerhouse games such as Phantasy Star 4 and the Shining series easily held their own against the best the SNES had to offer. But I don't want to tell you about the games you already love, instead I'd like to take a deeper look at three unepic adventures for the Sega Genesis. In the very beginning of Sorcerer's Kingdom, I died. I died a lot. In fact, the only strategy I found that resulted in not death was luring a straggling monster to the edge of the map, fighting it one-on-one, -on -one, and crossing my fingers. If I survived, I would then make a mad dash for town, save my progress, and start the harrowing process all over again. By the end of my first hour, I was firmly convinced that Sorcerer's Kingdom was complete and utter garbage. It combined unfamiliar and confusing battle mechanics with a brutally unfair difficulty level. The damage exchanged between my character and his foes appeared to be entirely random, as did the occasional but seemingly pointless stat upgrades that I was being awarded. But then something magical happened. I had saved up enough gold for new equipment. I had finally gained an edge on my opponent, and my understanding and enjoyment of the title soon fell into place. Sorcerer's Kingdom is a fairly traditional RPG that combines dungeon crawling with fast-paced tactical battles. It's a lot less Fire Emblem and a lot more Ark the Lad. Bumping into an enemy or selecting the battle option will engage the player with monsters visible on the screen, assuming they're not trapped in an inaccessible room or corridor, because those guys conveniently vanish. The party and their opponents then take alternating turns, moving across the field, casting magic, and frantically wiggling their weapons at one another. The whole process is incredibly smooth, and individual encounters are over with quickly, making dungeon exploration both addictive and enjoyable. There are no levels. After defeating a boss, the king grants the party class advancements, which unlock more powerful magic. But stat gains are entirely dependent on how the player utilizes their characters. Casting magic raises MP, taking damage raises HP and defense, and inflicting damage raises offense. This system gives the player a surprising amount of control. It's possible to train magic users into powerful warriors, or completely gimp a character through neglect. The biggest benefit comes from equipment upgrades, which are insanely expensive, especially when outfitting a team of four. Although dungeon chests can be surprisingly generous, grinding is frequently necessary. I encourage Sega fans to give Sorcerer's Kingdom a try. If you can get past the excruciating introduction, the battle mechanics, although repetitive, are a lot of fun, and the constant stat upgrades tap into our subconscious desire for instant gratification. Tracia was a game I really wanted to love. In my mind, this is what Ultima Exodus would have looked like on the Sega Genesis if it had been developed by Falcom. The intricate GUI would fit right in with any Ease title. The opening stills set the stage for a lunar-like adventure, and the character sprites are vibrant and detailed. I was prepped for the amazing journey ahead, yet found my enthusiasm quickly eroded. It was as if every design element of the game was deliberately chosen by the developer to whip up a perfect storm of tedious mediocrity. I don't say this lightly, but Tracy exists in a vacuum of fun. The battle system is painfully slow. Walking is painfully slow. Loading, which shouldn't even happen on a cartridge, is painfully slow. The maps are gigantic, mostly empty, and worst of all, boring. This particular problem is exasperated by the ridiculously large information screens that crowd the tiny gameplay window. Not to mention the game's nonsensical outdoor geography. If the player had any hope at all of seeing where the game expected them to proceed, it's completely dashed by the limited field of view and the ridiculous abundance of looping dead ends. Then again, if the paths between story point destinations were logical, the game would be over in a few disappointing hours. The battles, in addition to being sluggish, are extremely repetitive and easy. The majority of the enemy's hits will miss, while the heroes slowly proceed to bludgeon them to death. All of this might be forgivable if the story were amazing, 
but sadly the characters and dialogue completely lack personality. A fault I find with the localization effort and not with the game itself. Tracy's only redeeming quality is the fantastic packaging Revolution put together for the US release. As far as generic 90s fantasy paintings go, this one's well done. That dragon has more charm than all five of the game's playable characters combined. The action more or less depicts an actual event from the game, and the way the illustration wraps around the box and frames the gameplay's story synopsis is pretty clever. While the game might be a complete disappointment, the shelf candy makes up for the few dollars you might actually spend on it. Fatal Labyrinth is less a game than it is a personal test of metal. Randomized dungeon crawls, as popularized by Rogue in the West and Mystery Dungeon in the East, are rarely played for casual fun. These are hardcore gauntlets, I am going the way out. inspired by the truly epic tabletop adventures of the 70s, which are defined by their massive labyrinthian layouts, fearsome monsters, and deadly traps. Role-playing adventures in which character-driven roleplay took a backseat to the rule-oriented structure of combat mechanics and unpredictable dice rolls. Fatal Labyrinth, as the name implies, is quite deadly. The enemies are overpowered, spells are one use only, and running out of food quickly depletes your HP. To make matters worse, floor maps, treasure, and enemy locations are completely random, and your survival hinges on the probability rate of decent loot drops and your knack for quick tactical thinking. Run into a string of lousy luck, and you will soon find your would-be spelunker in dire straits. The gameplay is simple. Navigate 30 floors of dungeon and defeat the dragon lurking atop Draconia Tower. Your hero can only advance upwards by finding the hidden staircase on each level. Occasionally he'll fall into a pit trap which sends him back a level, but in general, once he's ascended a staircase, previous floors are gone for good. Unless he dies, which happens frequently. Then you're treated to a funeral cutscene in which your collected gold is spent on a fancy tombstone and some professional mourners. Literally, funeral upgrades are the only use for gold in this game. After the sequence, you'll return to a qualifying autosave level and lose any equipment or XP gained beyond that point. After all, roguelikes are nothing if not frustrating. It's tempting to rush past the enemies and head straight for the stairs. If you can find them, secret doors are a thing. But your hero acquires the XP gain from defeating most of the baddies in the dungeon in order to survive against the final boss. Plus, all visible enemies move when you do, making the possibility of painting yourself into a corner very, very likely. It's much safer to tackle your foes one-on-one, -on -one, either by confusing a mob with a chaos scroll or luring a group of enemies into a bottlenecked corridor. Mostly this degenerates into frustrating bouts of misses and parries with the occasional damage dealing hit. Particularly devious enemies will spam confusion and sleep, which usually ends in a tedious and painful death for your hapless hero. Despite its flaws, or perhaps even because of them, Fatal Labyrinth can be a very addictive experience with no two playthroughs being the same. So there you have it. These three unepic adventures may not be hidden gems exactly, they're more aptly described as the forgotten rocks of the Genesis RPG library, rough around the edges, but beautiful in their own special way. Uh, except Tracia. That one's just a fossilized turd. And on that note, thank you for watching. If you like my content, please share it with your friends, or maybe your enemies, or even complete strangers. I'm not picky. Once again, Dari out.